Hey guys, this is Lisa, and today I wanted to talk about sexually transmitted diseases or STDs. Now I know this is a topic that many people might think sounds scary or that you might not even feel comfortable talking about. But the fact is that STDs are extremely common and it's very likely that both you and me are going to encounter one at some point in our lives. That is how common they are. Most people are going to get an STD in their lifetime. So we need to talk about it. Now when people think of STDs, most people immediately think of HIV or AIDS. But the fact is that that is just one type of sexually transmitted disease. There are dozens of STDs out there and they vary in terms of their severity and symptoms and treatment. And many of them are much more common than we imagine. Some of the most common STDs include HPV, herpes, chlamydia, and gonorrhea. And HPV is so common, in fact, that almost every sexually active person will encounter an HPV infection during the course of their lifetime. That is crazy, right? Most of us are going to encounter the HPV virus in our lifetimes, and yet most of us don't even know what HPV stands for. It's the human papilloma virus. But I'm just illustrating how important it is that we have these conversations. I certainly think so, and I hope that you do too. So in this video, I am going to break down five major misconceptions that we have around STDs. And I think that if you are or ever plan to be sexually active, this is stuff you should definitely know. Myth number one is that STDs are rare and happen only to bad or dirty people. Okay, first of all, STDs are like any other infection that passes from one person to another. Sex just happens to be the way in which they're passed. But it doesn't mean that someone who has an STD is bad or dirty. STDs can happen to anyone. They don't happen to a certain type of person. It isn't only people who have lots of sexual partners that get STDs. You can just have one sexual partner and that is enough to expose you to an STD. So there is no type of person that gets an STD. STDs can happen to anyone and they are extremely common. Myth number two is that you would know if you had an STD. Many of us mistakenly believe that if you or your partner had an STD, surely there would be signs. There's this massive misconception that you would be able to tell if someone has an STD. But the fact is that many STDs have no easily visible symptoms and some even have no symptoms at all. For example, you could have an STD like HPV for years without even knowing you have it. You could have no visible symptoms and yet it could be impacting your long-term health. After all, HPV is closely linked to cancer and you could also be spreading it to your partners. That is why it is so important to get tested regularly and to be transparent about your results with your partners. Myth number three is that all forms of birth control prevent STDs. That is not true. Abstinence is really the only form of birth control that's going to prevent STDs. Condoms come a close second in terms of practicing safe sex, but none of the other birth control methods prevent STDs. The pill, the hormonal IUD, copper tea, those are only preventing pregnancy. They're not preventing STDs. So if you're having unprotected sex with a partner and neither of you have been tested, you have got to use a condom every single time in order to minimize your risk of exposure to an STD. That said, even condoms aren't 100% foolproof. So it really is best if both you and your partner both get tested before you start having sex and then continue to get tested regularly, especially if you're not in a monogamous relationship. All right, myth number four is that you can't get an STD from oral sex. This is again false. You can get an STD from oral sex. In fact, several STDs can be contracted from oral sex, including chlamydia, gonorrhea, herpes of course, HPV, hepatitis B, syphilis, and several of these can even impact the throat. So if you and your partner haven't been tested, even during oral sex, it is best to use a condom or a dental dam. Okay, moving on to myth number five. While some people believe that you can't get an STD from oral sex, there are others who believe that even simply touching an infected person or shaking their hand can give you an STD. This is especially the case in the way that people view a disease like HIV or AIDS, for example. And this is also false. 
STDs are not spread by handshakes or hugs or touching objects like toilet seats or telephones or towels or dishes even if they've been used by an infected person. That is not how you get an STD. You also do not get STDs from insect bites. They wouldn't be called sexually transmitted diseases then, right? Most STDs, as the term suggests, are spread by vaginal, anal or oral sex. Some STDs can also be spread to a baby from an infected mother during pregnancy, childbirth or breast feeding. Herpes can be transmitted by kissing, especially if the herpes blisters are in or around the mouth or lips. And certain STDs like HIV, hepatitis B and syphilis can also be contracted through the sharing of needles or other such objects contaminated by blood. But simply touching an infected person or an object that they've used is not going to get you infected. And yet, people with HIV, for example, are often denied basic employment and basic rights just because of this very misconception. So this is also something we need to re-examine. Okay, now that we've cleared up some of the misconceptions surrounding STDs, let's briefly take a look at common symptoms and treatments and what STD testing entails. While it's possible to have an STD without symptoms, some of the common symptoms include unusual discharge, unusual bleeding, soreness, redness, rashes and sores, itching, burning sensation during urination, pelvic pain, etc. So if something seems out of the ordinary down there, it really is worth getting tested. But like I said, why even wait for that? Just get tested regularly. Make it a part of what you do in the interest of your own health. Speaking of testing, I'm sure you're wondering what an STD test entails. They are in fact fairly straightforward and basic procedures. Most STDs can be tested for with either a blood test or a urine test or a swab from the mouth or the genitals. And in some cases for women, a pelvic exam might also be required. All STDs require medical treatment and should not be left to just go away on their own. Most STDs that have a bacterial cause can easily be cured with antibiotics, while as viral STDs STDs, sometimes you have to just live with it, but medication and treatment can help manage the disease so that it doesn't adversely impact your life. In either case, obviously getting early detection, getting the right treatment, the right medication on time goes a long, long way in restoring your health. So get tested. Again, if there is one thing you take away from this video, please let's make STD testing part of our lives. I really do think that finding a doctor or gynecologist that you trust and keeping regular tabs on your sexual health is one of the most important steps to a successful adult life. Also, if you do find out that you have an STD, I think it is absolutely your responsibility to let your partner or partners know so that they too can get tested and get the treatment that they require. I think it is so important that we all think about and talk about our sexual health more because the more we know and the more responsible we are about stuff like using protection and getting tested, the safer and better and healthier all our sex lives will be. I hope you liked this video. Please give it a big thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment, follow me on social media and as always don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time. Bye.